Car plunges into Pigeon River. Wisconsin DOT to hold public hearing on Highway 23. Kinship Kennel's jury trial begins. These stories and more coming up on Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. Welcome to Community News Review for June 12, 2018. I'm Maddie Fister. Flight for Life was called after a car left I-43 and crashed into the Pigeon River last night. The Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department says it happened around 9.30. When cr crews got to the scene, the passenger was out of the vehicle and the driver was pinned. Flight for Life took the 53-year-old driver to Theta Clark Hospital to be treated, and the passenger was taken to St. Nicholas Hospital. Deputies say the driver was traveling south on I-43 when he fell asleep and his vehicle left the road. The Department of Transportation has announced a public hearing for improvements on Highway 23 that would widen the stretch between Plymouth and Fond du Lac from two lanes to four. State Senator Devin Lemahieu says a new traffic study was conducted and it showed that there was 207 non-deer crashes over that 19 mile stretch in the last five years. This hearing is one step in the process the state must go through to widen that stretch of Highway 23. And Lemahieu says if everything goes on as scheduled, Construction could begin next summer, and the project could be completed by 2022, assuming that there are no lawsuits or judges ruling to shut the project down. The hearing will be held on Tuesday, June 19th from 6 to 8 at UW Fond du Lac. The City of Sheboygan officials officially broke ground on the City Hall renovation project on June 4th, 2018, after decades of discussion on the future City Hall, on April 4th, 2018, the Common Council voted unanimously to renovate and improve the functionality of the existing building for the benefit of the public and the city staff. The concurred with the plan recommended by the Building Use Committee to stay in the current building and implement a more efficient floor plan with a new entrance plaza and off-street parking north of the bu building. The three-story, 37,320 square foot renovation project expected to be completed the summer of 2019, and it will include a new HVAC system, new windows, a new elevator, new roof, new flooring, and a new common council chamber. The total cost budgeted for the City Hall project is $10.5 million. Public Work Director David H. Beeble was the official host of the groundbreaking ceremony, and presenters included Mayor Mike Vandersteen, City Administrator Daryl Hofflin, and Matt Cautious, President of Cautious, who is the general contractor assigned to the project. City Hall officials are incredibly excited to announce the start of the reconstruction project of the City Hall, said Beeble. Several city officials were in attendance along with the city employees and citizens. Representatives from Bray Architects, Emmons Business Interiors, and Cautious Construction were present as well. The City Hall renovation that began June 1, 2018 required all departments to move to alterate Alter, alternate locations during the construction. Two office locations are accommodating all City Hall departments and the formal Social Security Administration office at 606 North 9th Street and the former Sheboygan County Highway Department office at 1211 North 23rd Street. New hours of operation are 8 o'clock a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The building inspection department located at the former Social Security Administration office is open 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Video of the ceremony can be seen at wscssheboygan.com. A three-day trial begins Tuesday morning for Christy Tuchel, 
one of three co-defendants in the Kinship Kennels trial. Tuchel is facing a number of charges stemming from an investigation that involved the seizure of 36 live dogs from the kennel in the town of Wilson last summer. While officials were at the kennels, they also found an unplugged freezer full of dead and decaying dogs. Tuchel has charged a felony count of mental harm to a child, mistreatment of animals, and misdemeanor ch charges. Sheboygan police are investigating more vehicle break-ins this weekend. An alert from the department says that these vehicle entries were to unlocked vehicles that had firearms in them. They are reminding people to keep their vehicles locked when they are parked and do not leave valuables and unsecured firearms unattended in your vehicle. This follows after two 17-year-old boys were charged for breaking into vehicles in Sheboygan last month. Jesse Duplechain and Preston Klein are facing 14 misdemeanors for the break-ins last month. Court documents say over a dozen vehicles had been broken into. One of the victims thought his Audi might have been driven by one of the teens because the car was in disarray when he got into it in the next morning. The teens admitted to taking the money and going on a spending spree. They are each facing up to six years in prison if they are found guilty. In celebration of the 100th anniversary of Wisconsin's oldest continuous art orchestra, the Sheboygan Symphony Orchestra, Sheboygan Squared Business Improvement District and the City of Sheboygan collaborated on a placement of the musical notes in the street side downtown flower planters. In February, the Sheboygan Symphony contacted city staff about ways to energize the streets, streetscaping through the creative placemaking to celebrate their 100th year in an area of North 8th Street near Stephanie H. Weil Center for the Performing Arts. The first idea of hanging banners off the light poles involved into a creation of metal musical notes that would be installed above the flowers in the downtown planters. The Sheboygan Symphony is excited to celebrate their 100th year by partnering with the city and the downtown to create a sense of place downtown as we tell the story of the symphony, stated David Gallianetti, SOS, SSO board member and chair of the SSO Centennial Planning Committee, approximately 40 musical notes fabricated by the students at Lakeshore Technical College with Sheboygan Symphony 100 years, engraving them into where the installed flower planters along North 8th Street from the Erie Avenue to Pennsylvania Avenue. Downtown flower pots are planted each year by the Town, of Town and Country Garden Club. And that's our report for Tuesday. Join me again on Thursday for another recap of our local stories on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.